he used the poorer choice of equipment. The conditions were horrible. And the fact that we haven't found anything really leads me to believe that he died that night. Welcome to another segment of D.B. Cooper Through the Lens of Logic. We are examining uh, the money find, re-examining the money find, to really dial down and really draw out the inferences. It's all about inferences. This whole, this whole mystery is about inferences. If you take it at face value, you're going to be like the FBI and the moron enthusiasts who who's spin their wheels for 30, 40 years. First question. Did the money, did the bag of money arrive as I, I am depicting here in this photo? Or drawing, I should say. Clearly, the answer is no. I stated in the last video, we know that the, ba the bag of money itself, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna float on the river like this. It's going to go to its longest edge, its greatest surface area edge, which would be the 12 by 17 edge. And so it would be on its side. Uh, so we already know that. If it's floating on its side, it's going to wash up on its side. That's just how it's going to be. So there it is depicted on its side. And we know that it has to arrive in good order, and then it breaks. It can't break and then arrive. It has to arrive and then break. The weakest point on this money bag is actually the drawstring. Uh, so I guess under this situation, if it's not snagging, ripping, it's rotting. So uh, at some point, though, this drawstring breaks and the money spills out. And the problem is the heavy weight of the stacks cause several of these stacks to spill out of the bag. And really, to, to defend my, my picture, my, my drawing here, I can't think of a single situation where a rip would be small enough to allow only three stacks of cash to come out. I mean, it's either ripped and broken or it's not ripped and broken. So uh, the stacks of cash, mind you, if they're wet, they're going to be stuck together. So they're going to be coming out as a big clump. I'm not saying the whole thing or anything, but like, but I mean, certainly you're, you're talking 10, 20 stacks of cash probably uh, dumping out onto the sand but yet only three are found, and they're only found in this one square foot. We have a secondary problem, which is the stacks of cash that spill out of the bag are actually the ones on the perimeter. Okay, so if you think of this stack of cash, and it's, it's been put on its side, and then the, then, then the end rips open, well, which, which stacks of cash are dumping out? The ones right off the very top. The ones right off the very top. And we've, we've discussed this in previous videos that the money, the condition of the money really suggests some kind of protection. And most people think that it's okay, it's, it's, it's fine to go ahead and assume that the money bag itself was the protection. And let's go ahead and make that assumption then. If that's the case, the money that's found needs to come from the middle of the pack and not the end of the pack. Well, if you're talking about the middle of the pack coming out and being found, you're talking about hun a hundred stacks of cash being or close to it, 50, 60, 70 stacks of cash being dumped out onto the riverbed in order for your three stacks of cash to be among the middle. Otherwise, it's coming from the top, it's coming from the perimeter. Those are going to be the most worn, the most rotted, the most brittle stacks of cash in the bundle. And uh, it just doesn't seem to add up. Further, money, the money float axiom that I discussed previously showed us that the worn bills would sink easier than fresh crisp bills. And I know this through experience because I've done this experiment a few times. And yet, it would appear that the good bills in this bag were left behind while the crappy ones were the ones that fell out. So the ones that we would expect to be more worn, more rotted, uh, would be actually the ones that are left behind. Uh, and uh, 
and yet, you know, we're we're left with the bad bills, not the good bills. Now, I did say here, I did say here that it's this part's somewhat conjecture, and the reason it's conjecture is because I'm I'm making an assumption. The assumption is that there is an actual hypothetical comparison to make that there actually were good bills versus bad bills. And frankly, we're assuming that that's the case. We do not know that that's the case. We do not know that there actually could theoretically have been a comparison. If you were to be on the beach and watch this happen objectively, whether that comparison actually took place, we don't know that. We are assuming it. So here's the conclusions that we can draw. The money bag would remain on the beach longer than the single stacks. Why? Because the single stacks would dry up and be able to float away much quicker than the whole bag itself. The bag would spill more than three stacks of cash if it broke open. And the third reason is, is that there's nothing there to actually cause a ripping, a snagging, a tearing of this bag at all. This has to happen as it's sitting there stationary, and there's nothing to cause it to happen. So we have three strikes. Well, in baseball, that sort of means you're out. Not a single one of these conditions were met. Nothing to rip the bag. Uh, the bag wasn't left behind. It was not found with the stacks. I could see if Ingram found three stacks of cash and looks over and there's big money bags sitting there. That didn't happen. And there's only three stacks. Only three stacks. Three percent of the money is recovered. And it's all in this one little tiny square foot. So, what's all this tell us? It tells us that the stacks cannot travel in the money bag. Ah, here we go, here we go. Yeah, that's right, a third paradox. Our four observations prove that the money had to travel in the bag. It had to! Independent stack travel is impossible. However, our money float theorem demonstrates that it did not travel in the money bag. And yes, when you have contradictions like that, that is known as a paradox. We've talked about this before. Money must travel in the bag. Money cannot travel in the bag. We're going to go about resolving all these paradoxes starting in the next video. And until then, I want you to compare this paradox with the liar's paradox that I talked about a few videos ago. These two premises cannot both be true together. And therefore, there's an incorrect premise. And uh, how shall we solve it? I want you to think about this for a while, and stay tuned until the next video when I'm going to kind of put, put all the pieces that we've concluded in the line and start dissecting what a possible solution would look like. See you soon.